What's up everybody, Dan here. Welcome back to the channel. Lots of excitement around the new Polaris Matrix snowmobiles. So today we're gonna to take a deep dive into those differences. So between the Matrix and the Axis, let's get into it. So many of you guys have already seen, maybe even been on the new Matrix snowmobiles. As you can see behind me, as you look at them, there are some fairly unique differences. We've changed up the hood, we've changed up the tunnel, the matrix slash is obviously some really big news. There are a lot of characteristics to the sled, both as we measure them, as we look at them, um, even the parts themselves that are on these sleds that are very similar, how they ride is actually pretty unique. So one versus the other. So we're gonna break these things down and talk about differences between each of these models. All right, so as we take this dive into these differences, we'll start with what we know is the same. So what's gonna cross over? You can see here we've got a 2021 Axis 165. We'll start with the front end. So the gripper twos, the same. Spindles, the same. Ski rubbers themselves, the same. Uh, slight difference with the ski loops, and we'll get into that when we get onto the Matrix side. Just kind of freshen those up, gave them a new look, but essentially the same, no performance gain there. Um, suspension itself. So going with the velocity shocks, both front and rear suspension, the shocks themselves, the same. Upper and lower A-arms, the same. As we move back, because we got a lot of changes going on from here, uh, don't have all the data, but the way the interior looks, the bulkhead, the motor mount, like everything in there looks all essentially identical. Probably some really minute changes just to update a few things, but most of that internally is the same. Obviously all new different stuff as we go back onto the matrix, but under here guys, same series eight, 275 track, if that's what you ordered, and then same rear suspension as well as those shocks. So that kind of takes care of what we're seeing from the axis. What we know is very similar, or if not exactly the same as we jump over to the matrix snowmobile. So now that we're over here, again, we've got some updates here. You can see some kind of cool, stuff there going on with the ski loops, same ski rubbers, most of that stuff, even exact same part numbers. Spindles, upper and lower, the velocity shocks, all of that staying the same, but right away, some pretty drastic aesthetic changes here, and I say that because bulkhead potentially the same with a whole lot of new plastics, and because of those new plastics, a slightly different front bumper, obviously new hood and everything else, but there are some components and even as we dive into how these things feel when you ride them that are very, very similar, which I think is great because we don't want to cannibalize or say that that snowmobile is nothing compared to this. There's actually a lot of similarities to the Axis that for me, I really loved. And so jumping onto the Matrix, why we felt so at home with this snowmobile is there was a lot of stuff that didn't change. But going on to the changes, different nose cone, different, slightly different front bumper, the hood, the new LED headlight, the whole new console, the side panels now with these large quarter turns, which makes getting in and out of the snowmobile when you've got to access pipe can, clutching, your muff pot, just overall looking and inspecting of the engine, it's certainly uh, an update. So they made some changes and they made some great changes. As we move back onto here, you'll notice that we've got a glove box now or a whatever you want to put in that box right here in front of the gauge. Big news is the new 7S display. So this gauge, guys, to me, we made a big deal this year about turbos. We made a big deal about a lot of these things. Well, the technology piece of this and this gauge is just unreal. And I don't think any of us truly know just how awesome this gauge will be in terms of checking on the snowmobile and its parameters, being able to check on our riders using ride command and all of those things, having that GPS function, and then obviously just having a really clear display that as I'm riding, I'm not kind of having to lean in on it and look to see what my engine temp was or where I was at RPM. So for guys that are tuning and guys that are just really wanting to pay attention to all things that are happening with the sled, the 7S display was a huge update to the new Matrix snowmobiles. Moving back on the sled, you can see it totally different console. The pull start and where it comes is kind of from the same spot. I, for one, where the key is at, have gone over my handlebars looking for the key like it was on the Access snowmobiles a hundred times already. The key kind of tucked down in here out of the way. I think that's an awesome spot for it. Another big news, guys, is that we are coming with a factory tether. So that's so awesome, kind of about time, right, that Polaris has done this. 
I think a lot of research went into this, but we finally have a tether. It's kind of right in the center of the console. It's protected. I'm super excited. You'll notice that we've got our handlebar bags, the Skins Next Level Pac-Man bags on both of these snowmobiles. Awesome to know that because the handlebars didn't change, we were actually able to reuse some of that part, some of those parts from last season. But anyway, tether there, your mode button, all of those things right there. Handlebars themselves did not change, but the brake. So when we look at the new matrix, we've got our new brake, it's a new haze brake. It's got an awesome spot for your index finger, your middle finger, or both. But the new brake, I think, is gonna really help people. You guys have heard me say it a thousand times, and we're actually doing some videos this year about how important it is to ride with that one finger on the brake so that you're ready to use it at a moment's notice. Well, having a really good brake lever, huge improvement. They did some differences here with the grips. Kind of remains to be seen with myself in terms of an overall opinion about the grips. And then they've kind of thinned out and kind of modded these bar ends just to lighten those up as well. As we move back onto the snowmobile, can't forget, and we already talked about some of this stuff in other videos, but the new uh, stirrups that are here that are adjustable. In fact, when you get the sled out of the package, they don't even come on it. And you've got three different spots where you can mount those for now. I've just put these all the way up in that forward upper position. Can you use toe loops? And the answer is I use them all the time. And having them as an adjustable part now, it'll be interesting throughout the year to see if I wanted them all the way up and out of my way or if I want them down a little bit lower where I can really take advantage of using those. But nevertheless, Polaris kind of answering the call from I think a lot of people that have really big feet and they don't want anything to do with them. So the idea that you can put them all the way up and out of the way or heck, don't even put them on the sled if you're used to that type of riding. As we move back, our fuel tanks, both of these have stock fuel tanks. You guys have seen me with my skins tanks before. Unfortunately, just because of the new model sled, don't know if we'll see a lightweight modded fuel tank, but in stock form, about that 11 point, and they always use 11.3 or 11.2, somewhere around 11 gallons of fuel. You will notice that the tank design, it was, it was, it was shallow. So they weren't able to use the, you know, back from the early 90s fuel cell where we've got the cork in the bottom of it and that's how we got our fuel. Now this is obviously done all digitally. So when you start your sled, whether you have the 7S or the standard gauge, you'll actually see your fuel there, but it's now digital. So, and I can tell the engineers weren't that excited about being able to do that, but because the old fuel and the way the tank sat in there, you'd put that old cap in there and you'd have about this much of the cap sticking out. So different fuel cell, this seat, and then the overall design of the fuel tank, huge changes here. So big, big differences. And to the, to the mountain rider, this is awesome. So this idea that we ride a bit narrower, we can still use the inside of our legs and, and, the, you know, and our knees and everything else to kind of pinch the snowmobile a bit like that motocross style. But the seat is super lightweight. It's very minimalistic. And a lot of us had to seek the aftermarket to get something like this. And it's so cool that as a option, uh, actually not even as an option, as a factory standard feature to the matrix, you've got this narrow seat followed by that 11 and a half or 11 point something gallon tank. New running boards, running boards are about the same as they've uh, been before. We're gonna grab a tape measure and we'll start measuring some of these things just cause I feel like that info will be great for you guys to see. But running boards look very similar in terms of the way they mount going back onto the tunnel. The tunnel itself, so the tunnel between these two, drastic changes, all right? The matrix is new. Uh, this is a new one-piece tunnel design. Again, you can get matrix slash, and you can get the standard matrix. And we'll go over that not only with a tape measure, but I'll just tell you. So matrix slash is roughly about eight inches shorter than a standard axis tunnel. And then the regular matrix, that sort of in-season matrix, is about three inches shorter. So those, those of us that we cut our tunnels from 16 all the way up through this last year, whether you were cutting three inches, eight inches, whatever it looks like, we now have a snowmobile that when you ordered and you snow checked a matrix slash, you've got that cut tunnel option. Well, the slash part of that, we made a big deal about short tunnels, but what we didn't know and we didn't understand would be such a huge advantage was the actual taper to the tunnel. So as we come back here on the snowmobile, this portion of the tunnel that tapers in, what does that mean and why is it so different? Well, not only is it a lightweight design, and we, we haven't even gone into our coolers yet, but overall feel of how it rides. When you ride with the Matrix Slash, remember that we have no more wheelie bar. There's nothing back there that we wouldn't have known until we made these changes. 
we wouldn't have known how much resistance we were actually getting from the snow we were riding in. Now as we are riding, we're in a side hill position, we wanna turn up. We don't have that excess material coming back here that's literally trapping us and making that position and even making that move a lot more difficult. When you ride this and that tunnel is tucked in and it's basically tucked in to the snow trough that the sled, the track itself is making. So there is no more snow holding you back right there. Suddenly these moves that you thought you needed to put a bunch of input into the sled to get done, now it's just happening. It's happening lightning fast. So can't wait to hear from more and more riders as they get more time on the matrix slash of just how easy these maneuvers that maybe weren't as easy from before are now becoming these things that are totally possible. The other component to that is you're riding up a hill and you guys have seen the short tunnel stuff. There's lots of stuff all over YouTube, all over all of the Instagram, everywhere. When you're riding up and the snowmobile's starting to feel like it's gonna get stuck, remember once again, no excess tunnel componentry hanging up on the snow, causing us to get high centered with our tracks. If that tunnel design is inside the trough that the track is making, be prepared that as you pull back on that snowmobile, that snowmobile is gonna dig down into that snow, find that traction and come up and out of there. And that's why you'll see guys really like veering up the sleds and thank God you guys know from watching the channel how to do a like a downhill hop under or any of those moves, a pirouette, something like that. This is the tunnel design that's gonna really help facilitate those types of moves. As we talk about the matrix tunnel and this one piece design, the other thing that's really cool news is that our cooler guys, our cooler system, it actually ends right here about the backside of this fuel tank. So back here, we have no more cooling. So there's nothing going on here. Polaris has taken care of cooling the motor from that cooler that's about right here. So it's a robust design, it's different, and it's definitely helping this snowmobile. And now we've got no worries back into this area where this is all just one big solid, very strong piece of aluminum. Obviously the bumper has a lot and aids in the strength of the rear end of this. All new snow flap, which heck, we're not even really calling this thing a snow flap. And then you've got your taillight design here. Really awesome, like the ergonomics of the bumper. Granted, the aftermarket's gonna change a lot of this, but the bumper design, you can see how much of that is gonna add strength to the rear end of the sled. Again, we go underneath. We did talk about some similarities here. This is a sled that just happens to have the Series 8, so that 2.75, 3.5 pitch. That setup that's here, very similar to our 2021 mon one model we've got here. Same suspension configuration. Both of these are a chaos. So we've got our velocity shocks, uh, same eye scratchers, and same setup there. So very similar there. Okay, so I've got my tape measure in my hand. We are gonna go over just some, some stuff that I think we can assume is the same, but we're gonna just let you guys put your eyes on it the same way I am. So we're gonna talk about ski stance first. You guys can tell that I've got the spindle set right in between, so bushings on either side of the ski stance. So we're gonna put that through the center on the axis snowmobile, and we are right there, center to center, at that three foot mark. This is personal preference again, and I don't wanna tangent off, but I'm essentially that guy that will put those right in the center. I feel like you get a lot of ski rubber life by leaving it into the center. I feel like that's where the ski rubber has the most purchase under the spindle, sits the nicest in the ski. So that's just a little tech tip for you, not to mention, we want a balance. I want a balance of how easy the sled is to initiate and get onto its side, but also how stable it is at high speed. So that right in the center to me is kind of my favorite. So we're gonna come over here. We're gonna do the same thing just to confirm. And I can already tell you guys right there, we are exactly the same. So assuming that our ski stances are the same set in that, and it's again a personal preference, but our ski stances are the same, upper and lower react front end, our shocks, our spindles, no changes there, guys. So besides the ski loop change, really nothing happening there. Big aesthetic changes as we go on. We are gonna weigh these snowmobiles and we'll see where those kind of, where they stack up to one another, one versus the other. But we'll move back. And here's one that I just saw. So watch this. So this is a, this is the black five inch low bar. So 47 and a quarter over here, right to that end and 46 and three quarters. So some small changes there. Could be the way it's sitting on the floor. There could be a little bit of variable there. It could also be in the roll of the handlebars, but we're really close in terms of black low bar on the matrix snowmobile to black low bar on the axis. Moving back where we know we're gonna see some drastic changes, as I were to butt into underneath the toe loop, right into that bracket right there, and I'm butting into that and come on all the way back, all the way to the tail end of the snowmobile with a factory bumper. 
This is showing 77 and a half inches. So that is a 165, not a cut tunnel. This is just from the Axis chassis. Now we go over here to a snow check matrix slash, and we're gonna measure this out. So button into that, coming all the way back here, guys, 71 inches. So we can see those massive differences and these two snowmobiles, even visually as you look at them, this thing looks like a short track because of that matrix slash tunnel. So again, guys that were cutting tunnels on the axis chassis to get it to feel like it was a short tunnel long track, now we're getting it as a snow check option. And you guys can kind of relate the 155 version of an axis to the 155 matrix slash and just those differences right there in inches. So big changes to the rear end of the snowmobile. What we can't really measure, and it's just more of an aesthetic, but how much of an advantage it is, is that slash, that cut in or tapered in section of the tunnel from back in here. Our design right here will go from the running board up to the bar right here. And I'm just kind of angling that over. You guys can kind of see how I'm gonna to try to keep these the same. So that's showing 34 and 3 8 Again, right to the bar end there. So 34, 3 8 and over here we are 34 and a quarter. So we're essentially there. So our riding position, why I'm doing that is I am pretty finicky. Once I get onto a snowmobile and it becomes sort of that avatar horse for me, I want to know that things are the same. And so even though as you look at this sled, it actually looks like it's sitting up off the snow or sitting up even off the showroom floor in here a bit taller, our measurements are right there within just a few, you know, an eighth or a quarter inch of each other, which I think is going to be important. So whether or not we need to make changes to that remains to be seen. Some other things, let's, do, let's go into the seat. So you can look at how drastic of a difference the older Axis model sled has with a seat. We've obviously pulled the under seat bag from here. This thing just kind of ends. So there is no under seat bag that's here. You can put a bag on there as an accessory, obviously on both of these ones. But as I kind of sight through the running board, hit the running board here, up to the top of the seat, kind of where I'd be seating, sitting, that's about 20 inches. As I come over here and do the same, I'm sighting through and I'm actually about 19 and a quarter. And so, changes there that are actually pretty helpful. You guys have seen and probably have on some of that, some of your older sleds, the low seat. So having a lower seat, it's easier for us to make those transitions getting from one side or the other to the sled. We'll come all the way to the back of our Axis snowmobile here and I'll measure from outside of bumper to outside of bumper and I'm about 16 and a half inches. Now I come back in a very similar location, guys and I am about 13 and three quarters. So we've tapered things down drastically towards the rear end of that. And again, visually, it's awesome looking. It looks, it looks like we've already modified the snowmobile and that's how you picked it up from your dealer. So we've taken our 2021 165 850 Chaos and we've, we've put it up in the air. Now, let's remember that instead of doing these where there's no fuel, there's no oil, there's no nothing, this thing besides some tunnel packs and some other things is essentially ready to ride. So full tank of fuel, full of oil, uh, all of those things. So uh, nothing in the, in the bags right now, but I like doing these more of like a real world weight just so we can get a comparison. And you guys can see that we're just sort of at a dead hang there, 485 pounds. So again, full of fuel, full of oil, essentially ready to pull the rope and go. The other thing too, guys, that you guys know from videos in the past, what I consider sort of mountain stock is both of these sleds will have the SLP lightweight. So it's got the comp can with the cooker. You can see there's no other, no other details, no, no, no belt drive change, no nothing. So this was the two sleds that I found that were the closest in terms of both 165, both with the lightweight silencer on there. Clutching is the same, both full of fuel, full of oil. All right, guys. So we've got the new 2022 matrix slash 165 before we show you the weights there so again we're going to talk about this same full tank of fuel full of oil the oil in the reservoir if we were doing this dry weight where you can just drain the whole oil and the fuel system you can get a lot better a lot closer within x amount of pounds of each other so we are at 496 pounds 165 matrix slash uh, 275 track same suspension so here are the things that we can add. We went from that 485, so we're, we're about that 10 pounds. It kind of fluctuates between the 496 to the 495.5. 
oh my gosh, we're heavier, right? Well, we're four pounds in the wrap. If you guys don't believe me, look back through the Next Level Channel videos. We actually weigh one of these Arctic FX wraps and it's crazy that we, we always are so focused on weight, but the wraps look so awesome. This year it's such a full coverage wrap that guaranteed we've got some pounds just in the wrap, which the other sled didn't. Um, the other things about the matrix is we're talking about the differences between the Axis and the matrix is the 7S display. The display in itself, I've pulled the display up and out of the hood and the display itself quite a bit heavier than the standard gauge and then you've got the PID gauge as well. So the gauge in itself is heavy. The headlight guys, the new LED headlight and this headlight is it's pretty state of the art. I mean, the thing absolutely puts out the light. A lot different headlight and it's a lot heavier than where we were before. But being able to see is pretty dang important, especially, well, not too many of us riding out in the dark in the mountains, but for those Midwest guys that we have these short track versions of these, that LED light was pretty dang important. So some weight there. The other component to this that is adding, and you guys are already seeing these weights where we're gonna get right down to where we're even with that, is that each of these with that 7S display, and we'll show a shot of it, actually has a small battery. So picture a battery like in a dirt bike. It's got a battery in here that will run that 7S display, and it's so that your GPS and the functions of that, that GPS or that display can stay running just as you turn the key. You don't always have to have the snowmobile running to do that. So some battery weight, some weight in the wrap, as well as the gauge in itself, and the hood, the new hood and just everything else with the air box and everything is just a bit heavier than what we've had on the Axis sled. So hopefully you guys are seeing just how real world this is. I'm not protecting a thing here, just explaining myself to what these two sleds and just those significant differences that are there. And just to keep the video honest, so you guys know that I am being honest, know that this also has the cooker as well as the SLP comp can. So very similar setup, no changes to the belt drive, no changes to the clutching. So it's all Magnum Force weights. It's all the same clutching on both snowmobiles. So just wanted to point that out. This has been a lot of fun, you guys, going over all of the differences between the Axis snowmobiles and the Matrix snowmobiles. Really hope that the video was helpful. It was fun to go through. And even for myself, the sleds are so new, taking a tape measure, using a laser line, weighing the snowmobiles, and just seeing just how different one sled versus the other is. Hopefully you guys thought it was awesome. Remember you guys, support our channel and subscribe to it. And we'll see you next time.